Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. conversation today is with Adam Garnett Jones and Sarah Koleski, and we're here today to talk about their new film, Great, Great, Great. This is a, a conversation I think you're going to enjoy a great deal. It's, it's, a, it's a conversation about love. It's about relationships. It's, it's about the trouble, as we, uh, as we find out really early on in the conversation, it's about the trouble below the surface, and you're going to have to listen in to, to find out what I mean about that. But it's really, uh, how could I say, it's about that uncertain uh, middle ground that seems to to exist in in pretty much any relationship, partner, friend, lover, husband, wife, uh, teacher, mentor, you know, uh, we, we, we talk about contradiction. We talk about how, how love and relationships are really not that linear. We talk about unhealthy narratives and, in, in storytelling and Hollywood and paradox. We talk about monogamy and celebrity and, 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 and just relationships kind of, uh, as a whole and, and, and something, uh, 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 that Adam refers to as a, I think a Canadian laugh, which is kind of fun and interesting as well. And, and believe it or not, we actually chat a little bit about Lego. So you're really going going to have to dive into this and how pretty much nothing lasts forever. So there you go. Lego and um, this very cynical notion that, or truthful notion that nothing lasts forever. Uh, it's a delightful uh, film. Uh, great, great, great. And it's uh, a, a great conversation and one I think you're going to really enjoy. DavidPeckLive.com for more information about my, uh, my speaking and my writing face-to-face-live.ca for uh, a, a whole host of other interviews with filmmakers, uh, actors, writers, uh, comedians. Check it out. And you can also support what I do through Patreon if uh, you're interested in doing that. And uh, rabble.ca for more interviews and writing on conversations about things that matter. Coming right up, Anna, Adam Garn jones Sarah Kolaski, and their new film, Great, Great, Great. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by two very special guests here today. Adam Garnett Jones and Sarah Kolaski is here today to talk about their new film, Great, Great, Great. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you. Well, thanks for having us. So, what is so great, great, great about the film, about relationships? Let's just go right in. Let's just dive right in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no time for idle chit chat. No. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I think that the title is a, a bit sarcastic. Mm. Um, we, when we were talking about coming up with uh, a title, we were um, thinking about the kind of character that's at the center of the film, and she's somebody who is really insisting on the the, 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 the goodness or the, the greatness of, of the life that she's living mm. while being extremely dissatisfied. And so... Um, I don't know if it's something that I say or that Sarah say, says or that we just... I think both of world, us. But like when, yeah, yeah when, when we're sort of um, uh, want, wanting to indicate that everything is, is fine but actually not wanting to talk about it, there's, you know, people will say like, oh, yeah, how, how are you doing? And doing right. Great, great, great. Yeah, things are, things are great. And, <laughs> yeah, and it's like the, the, the repetition Funny. and the insistence on that that hints at um, uh, trouble below the surface. And so that's kind of where hmm. we wanted to head with the title. Mm-hmm. Yeah, trouble below the surface could have been the logline for the film, right? Yeah, yeah. that's good. <laughs> Why didn't we come up with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's really interesting. I, I, I love I love the way you guys and you're you, Sarah, uh, actor, uh, writer, producer, Adam, writer, director. Is that is that a fair assessment of you know, both of your sort of quick bios? Uh, and Adam also was a producer on the film as well. Right. So. B- a real intimate relationship between the two of you as well, just mm-hmm. coming to terms with the film and the script and, 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 and your own, your own stories, I would imagine. I mean, I know this is a, a, a work of narrative fiction, but you know, I'm dying to ask you both how much of your own, you know, your, <laughs> your own relational past and lives have actually played a role here. But I love the way you start the film. Right. I love the way you hmm. set the film up, uh, you know, with 
not that your 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 mom and dad's relationship is ending. That's not what I love, but it's it's mm-hmm. it's their reaction to it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's as if they've they've come to terms with this, you know, this trouble below the surface and they're well, okay, yeah. and they're okay with it. It, it, well, I think one of them has come to terms. <laughs> I think right. It, it's clear, like, it's very clear that um, uh, Lauren's mom is the one in control of the relationship. And I mean, literally, for people who haven't seen the film, the opening scene is um, in their living room when Lauren's mom is giving um, Lauren's dad a massage. She's literally sitting on top of him explaining that they're getting a divorce, but nothing's really going to change. Neither of them um, is going to move out. They're just going to be more like roommates. Right. And, uh, and then her, her, Lauren's dad is sort of like, uh, yeah, sounds okay to me. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Huge. He's just sort of being like, you know, bullied into the situation more or less. Well, isn't, isn't one of the lines to right out of the gate, nothing lasts forever? Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, yeah Lauren's mom. Um, that's her a bit of um, parting wisdom to Lauren, <laughs> and and that's so that scene is really what um, shakes things up right. inside of Lauren and makes her begin to question. I mean, I think she probably has been sort of questioning her uh, relationship with her boyfriend of five years, um, but the catalyst to make her go home and really start to um, discuss things with uh, Tom, her boyfriend, and and how they can basically do better than right. uh, right. than her parents who've thrown their you know thirty year marriage out the window. Um, what it, help me out here? But it, mm-hmm. something about you're, you're you're talking about how you guys can do better and what was it? Find find some new friends, start working at the gym, and get a job. Was that your line? I just I'm and, laughing, uh, laughed out loud. Oh, yeah. well, Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, well, I, I suggest some, some things for myself. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, making business plans, improve my French, uh, which always gets a laugh. Like, that was never intended to be a funny line, but people just, I don't know, yeah, improve improve my French always gets a laugh. And then, and then yes, I tell Tom uh, that he should, um, yeah, like, to try to make some new friends, look for a new job, um, <laughs> go to the gym and yeah, yeah. and he's you know not taking it so well <laughs> yeah yeah no it's just so that's funny because that's you, a very canadian laugh i think it's because, a, interesting uh, when, when you're talking about like self-improvement i think it's something mm. that a lot of canadians kind of learned a bit of french when they were in elementary school and it's, mm-hmm. it's just like a, a real kind of grasping at Draws idea like yeah. oh I need to do something I've got to do something have a positive impact on my life that <laughs> right. I've been ignoring for a long time but that actually doesn't address anything fundamental right uh, yes but you know I just have this nagging feeling like oh sure yeah it would be wouldn't it would be good if I was better right? yeah right? because sure, because yeah, that'll, yeah. That'll, because that'll things are great 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 about. right yeah. yeah yeah it'll make yeah it'll make me a better person which will make me better in this relationship and yeah <laughs> so yeah. so uh, d- does nothing last forever. I mean, what what I really love about oh, oh by the way, by the way, yeah. congratulations on the film. I mean, it really delightful. Oh, it's fun. Uh, we've got to talk about the notion of romantic comedy. I want to hear more about that from both of you because uh, I'm not sure okay. this is a romantic comedy. But but anyway, <laughs> tell me yeah. about things lasting forever or or not. I'm I'm really interested to hear what what you both have to say on that. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I mean, the, the idea for um, the, the film and discussing uh, the sort of uncertain middle ground of relationships mm. um, came from um, Adam and I both being in our own long-term relationships um, in, in our 20s, which uh, we then uh, each uh, ended um, ourselves, and so we were. It was around the time we were thirty, and we we're looking at, you know, a lot of stuff that happened in our lives and our friends who uh, were around the same age. And it seemed like everyone in long-term relationships um, was either getting married or right. throwing it out the window. Right. And and so we found that that kind of pivotal point in a relationship really interesting. And it wasn't something that a lot of people were comfortable talking about either. It really made people 
uncomfortable to sort of question the idea of um, whether they were ready to get married. Like, they, you know, they definitely love their partner, but was this actually the person that they wanted right. to spend the rest of their life with? Um, big, big you know, questions, I, 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 right? Exactly, yeah. Big, yeah. scary friends, questions. Yeah, yeah. And, if and then, of course, we're and, very candid we, about it. And we all do know at some level that nothing does last right. forever. Yes. I mean, yeah. Some 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 relationships do do last a very long time and of course we all die in the end. But um <laughs> you know, the the people that we are when we're first getting together in a relationship and that excitement of love and passion and sex, uh it it, it doesn't last forever. It it changes and mm-hmm. and you know, some relationships are able to um, turn into something different mm. on the other side of that and, and, and grow and evolve over time. And some relationships aren't able to withstand that. Um, and it's really hard, I think, when you're in a relationship to know what kind of relationship you're in. You know, is, is this the, the, the like incredible, passionate two weeks that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life? Uh, or is this you know, the, the incredible passionate two weeks at the beginning of something that's mm. going to last for decades. And, yeah. and, and, you know, we have all have these stories of people that we've known who have um, gotten together and then broken up and then gotten back together again, or, you know, you know people who've been married three times and, you know, third time's a charm. And I, I think that, that in the context of all of those different narratives of different relationships that we've seen and heard about, um, when you're in, in the middle of a relationship that you have been in for a while and you're painfully aware of its imperfections, uh, it, it, it can be dizzying to, 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 to try to figure out where you are, um, where you are in the story, you know, and, yeah, and, and the beginning what, of the story, is this the middle of the story, is this the end yeah. of the story of this relationship. Um, yeah. And, and what you have to do to move forward, like if, if you should move forward or if it's not, you know, if it's not going to work well, out. Well, you know what's so interesting? There's, because uh, I think I think of the word mediocrity and, and, and that's maybe not mm. fair at all, you know, uh, for, for, <laughs> for people who have been living in relation, loving relationships for many, many years. I mean, everybody's got their own way uh, of showing love. I mean, we can talk about love languages mm-hmm. and so on. But again, I'm going to go back to the, the film and the way you sort of set everything mm-hmm. up. So here's your mom and dad divorcing question mark we're not Mm -hmm. quite sure but while she's giving him a massage I mean there's nothing to me that's kind of more loving than that I mean she's she's you know she's there's touch there's uh uh, you know uh, giving a massage is not easy right (laughs) it takes (laughs) it takes effort there's something really lovely and and kind about that and yet they're saying at this point yeah you know what we're we're done it's it's really kind of interesting yeah I think that embodies a lot of the contradictions that people have within themselves and within relationships. Um, And uh, that's sort of, that's part of Lauren's, my character's struggle in the film where she, she is really in love with Tom and part of her does want to pursue a life with him, but at the same time she's scared of what she'll be missing out on if she goes down that road and um, Tom isn't, she's kind of looking to him to, like, satisfy all of her needs and desires, and he can't do that, and so she looks elsewhere, um, but she's not looking to, like, fall in love with someone else. She's just looking to have particular desires satisfied, um, and so there's all these, like, contradictions inside of her, which has been really cool. We just went to a, a screening of the film last night, and a number of people in the audience said, um, oh, I completely understand how like she's doing one thing and then she's doing something right. you know completely contrary to that. And, and a number of women in particular were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what we do." <laughs> that's funny. That's right. uh, are, but are we? I mean, this again. I'm, and what I love about your film is it's it's about so many. It's about relationships. Clearly, it's about love. It's about marriage. It's about all these things. But it's 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 pretty much it's pretty much one of those stories that's about everything because you touch on you know uh, you touch on uh, to me you touch on life and death these great shots of her walk always walking down the street in sort of uh, you know this pensive mode of you know what's next it's about freedom it's about choice and you know <laughs> it's about it's about responsibility yeah. and all these so it's but aren't we yeah. all I guess my question to you to both of you is aren't we all duplicitous in some way right aren't we all just a bundle of walking contradictions 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My final answer is maybe. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Adam? I Absolutely. I mean, I think um, I, I mentioned the Q&A last night, but one of the, the revelations to me is being in uh, a, a long-term relationship. My, my first really you know, long, long-term relationship was how long you can be with somebody and, and actually not really know them very well. Mm, um, interesting. Yeah. The feeling that, 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 you know, you don't know them and they don't know you. Um, and how strangely alienating that can be. I think, I think, you know, when I was younger, I always imagined that, you know, you start dating somebody and then it's this linear process where you just right. know them better and better. And then maybe you move in. And, um, by that time, you know, you're just kind of in each other's pockets all the time and, and have, and have you know, know exactly what each other are thinking and, and you can never know anyone better, but it's very possible to go through all of those stages, um, but actually not do that hard work of getting to know somebody and mm-hmm. um, be kind of acting, almost like play acting all of the, right. the different relationship stages without, um, without actually diving deeper and, and developing a, a, a deeper sense of intimacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, tell, talk, talk, Talk to us a little bit about this idea of, of, of romantic comedy. I mean, to what degree has Hollywood screwed us over from a relational perspective? <laughs> you know? I, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I, like, I will flat out admit that I grew up loving romantic comedies. Um, and, and I still do, but I feel like my taste is now, I, I look for ones that are a little more offbeat, like right. obvious styles. Um, with Jenny Slate, uh, but uh, yeah, in terms of, um, how they've screwed us over. Yeah. It's really hard when you, I think, I mean, I can only speak from my perspective as a woman, when you see a narrative over and over again, where you're told that to be happy, you need to find a man. Um, you won't be happy and fulfilled until you find a man. And, uh, that is, yeah, it's definitely gotten in my head after hearing it over and over again. And we really like to tell ourselves those stories. Right. right. Like it's just, it's comforting to have that narrative. Like if I do this, then I will be happy. I just have to follow these steps and then I will have a happy life. (laughs) Um, And then, but yeah, it's kind of think outside of that and think, well, you know, no, maybe that's, not actually the narrative that my life has to follow um, is uh, it can be a little scary, but I think over the past several years um, I've been more, um, I've been trying to get more comfortable with um, the fact that maybe that's not a healthy narrative right. to follow. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this There's story, so many unhealthy narratives <laughs> too, with yeah. Like it's so true, I mean, particularly for for men and women. I mean, like there's there's the ugly duckling romantic comedy mm. where there's mm. you know there's yeah. the, the the woman who's like nerdy and gawky and unattractive, and then you know some, something happens and she blossoms into her true beautiful bombshell self, and then you know finds the man of her dreams, and then you know walks off the sunset. And then there's the, yeah. the like the the male version of that, which is like the kind of like pathetic nerdy guy who like somehow comes into his his masculinity by pursuing a woman who says no over and over and over again. But he, you know, he like continues to pursue her and eventually she, she relents, he becomes a real man and, you know, then they walk off into the sunset. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, like there's there's so many of those kinds of, or, or the, the, what's, what's the one, the, the classic Jimmy Stewart romantic comedy that you've got mail was based on where there's the the man and the woman and they, they hate each other for the whole movie. And then, uh, oh, kind of taming of the shrew. Uh, well, that's another one. I mean, there's a lot of romantic comedy models where the the, the, yeah. the man and the woman hate hate one another, and then by the end they realize like the whole time they were actually just in love. Yeah. Um, and that <laughs> you know like and all that fighting isn't about you know you know having an unhealthy relationship. All that fighting was actually about you know sex and passion Courtship. and and, and yeah. real and real love for one another. Yeah. Um, and so there's there's just you know every side of, of, of that, or of all those different tropes, is pretty gross. I mean, get right down to it, and it leads to some, some very unhealthy ideas. Well, Adam, your, your comment about, be about it should be. yeah, and your comment about, um, well, my, probably my extension or my paraphrase, that love and relationships are really so not linear, and I guess that's kind of what I mean by maybe Hollywood screwing us over. I mean, fiction might be 
fictional, but it doesn't have to be fantasy, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it can be right. it can be steeped in reality. And if if maybe if we grew up with a more I don't know a richer, more comprehensive, robust understanding of how messy relationships are, they can be a disaster. They're a paradox. They're con full of contradictions. Might mm -hmm. we be in a better place? Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <yeah. laughs> we'll have to try it. <laughs> we'll have to try it. I don't think any of us are ready for it. I think that's uh, that, 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 that's my sense. That's, that's a big step. Well, and we I mean, throw people everything like, out the window. Those people like those stories with with easy answers. I mean, mm -hmm. I I know that I also really liked. I mean, not not only romantic comedies, but lots of films when I was was younger that provided um, real. Certainty within the, within the framework that, that provided uh, audiences with real answers to difficult questions. I mean, especially I think I mean when, when you're younger, but also when, when you're older. I mean, life is full of uh, uncertainty and death and misery, <laughs> <laughs> and it can be wonderful to look toward art for um, for for a clear it, answer to right. exactly the that right. Yeah, are un unanswerable. Yeah, so, I, mean, I, I think, I think it can be satisfying. It can be. Yeah, and I think that is the um, the purpose of, of some art, uh, which is just, you know, it, its uh, purpose is entertainment, escapism. When you're feeling, you know, not great about your life, it is really nice <laughs> to watch something that takes you away from that, that gives you hope. Um, and there's a place for that, for sure, in the world. Um, but uh, But the type of film we wanted to make was, uh, we were very aware that that was not the, um, the the trap that we wanted to fall into. Well, but so, what's so ironic, you know, to me about about your story is that that you know, on one hand, it kind of maybe seems cynical, or but but it's re it it really isn't because there's a whole lot of love going around in this film. I think, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's well, certainly if it's not love, it's respect. You know that that yeah, I, you know, I think so. Yeah, I th I I I I've certainly felt it. I, I, I mean, I mean, there's. I love that scene by the way, where she's walking down the stairs and the graffiti on the wall. Never fall in love. I mean, it's it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's delightful. But I don't. Do you do you guys actually believe that? I don't think so, because that's not that wasn't my takeaway. Certainly, there's a question at the end. Oh, are these guys going to be okay? Are they going to make it? Do they wind up together? And I would imagine that's what you were hoping for us to do as, as the, you know, as, as viewers, but, but you guys aren't that cynical, are you? That, that we shouldn't fall no. in love? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, Adam just got married this year. Mm. So. <laughs> there you go. Well, you've got, you've got a whole lot of other insights there, Adam. We've got, we've got some other questions now for you. Well, while we were shooting the film, yeah. and I was actually, um, uh, I, I, would, I just finished shooting my, my first feature, and then, and then came back to Toronto, and then a few months later, I started shooting Great, 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 and um, also at that time, I met someone and was falling just head over heels, madly, insanely in love. Nice. And um, so it was very strange. That is in so many ways, so many ways about, about the failure of past relationships while really, really just allowing myself to, to fall completely in love. Yeah. 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 You, you got oh, are you going in and out? Is, sorry, I can't hear you, Adam. Oh, Hello? Am, I, am I gone? Are you back live? Yeah, we just, we, you faded out there just a wee bit. Oh, that's weird. So you're, it sounds, yeah, like, I just, sounds like you're back live. Huh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I just missed what you said. Uh, I don't know. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> I guess it's gone. Cut out. Gone forever, like many of my past relationships. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is this, so, so Diane asked this question, I want to, we're going to get to the Lego in a second, but, but Sarah, <laughs> is, um, is this a, is this a film about empowerment, would you say, or, or is it about betrayal? Oh, I would say it's about both of those things. Mm. Um, there's definitely, I mean, yeah, there's no question it's about a betrayal. Lauren um, betrays Tom's trust when she initiates the affair with David. Um, but empowerment in the sense that um, Lauren is, well, I don't know if, if empowerment is the right word, but um, but Lauren is trying to figure out 
um, how to move forward in her relationship with Tom while not getting everything that she needs from him. Like I was saying at the start, she's looking to him to satisfy like all of her desires and, and not being particularly sensitive to the situation that Tom is in. Right. Um, at the time, um, he's unemployed. He doesn't have a real sense of purpose um, in his life at the time. And uh, she's just sort of like, well, just find a job. Just like, go look for a job. <laughs> and, and he's just not able to, you know, to, to find anything. Um, and so he's feeling lost and she's feeling lost. And, um, and they're not communicating about that. So, um, so that's sort of what sends Lauren off on this other um, path to, um, to, to rekindle this I, mean, I don't even want to call it a romance, but right. th- this affair, uh, this affair that she had with her boss um, before she met Tom. Um, but at the time, her boss was married, so it was uh, he was having an affair at the time. But anyway, so she um, uh, finds this very um, sexually satisfying relationship with her boss, David, who's older and very like assured um, of, of what he wants in life, very much the opposite of Tom. Um, and yeah, I mean, in terms of the question is that's empowering. Sorry, Adam. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that like having like, the question between empowerment and betrayal is interesting because I think that that's mm-hmm. sort of something that romantic comedies set up. I think romantic comedies being geared toward women often, want to be very much about empowerment and the things that that Lauren does in our film could happen in a traditional romantic comedy. But I think what's different about this film is that it also digs into some of the consequences of that Mm. in a way that a romantic, like a traditional romantic comedy Mm -hmm. doesn't. Um, I mean, I Mm -hmm. think that like that kind of very broad idea of female empowerment where it's like, yeah, you know, you, you go girl, just like get out there and, 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 and get, you, what, get what you want. Like, you, yeah, you yeah, do your it thing. All. Um, yeah. Do, yeah, do your thing, you do you. Well, I mean, Lauren sort of does that, but... <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, and I don't think that that's necessary. That's not a harmful message, except that you can't just go out there and do what you want and do you. <laughs> and, and not expect <laughs> if, that there if, will if be it, If it means... If it, yeah, without expecting that there's going to be consequences, and you yeah. don't also get R- to respons- that and be wildly disrespectful to right. the people right. around you. Right. Because you can... Hurt people. Yeah. Well, it's heart. It's heartbreaking to watch <laughs> you confess to Tom in the film, and and one of the lines that just really just reached in and kind of ripped my heart out was when he said, "Every what was the line? Every decision you made, you made without me." Like that yeah. was just heartbreaking. I mean, and then I I reflected on that later and thought, so hang on a minute here. If you had made, if if you know you, uh, you know, as in Lauren had made the decision to have an affair and brought him into that, he would have been okay with that. Like I actually started to kind of <laughs> unpack that a little bit more. But isn't that what really love is about? Is about being able to actually put my cards in the roll my sleeves up and put my cards on the table. Y- yes, exactly, exactly, and that's what we that was sort of one of the core ideas that we wanted to include in the film that this couple um there's a betrayal between them and then that brings them to this point of actually communicating right with each right other. good this yeah. breakthrough where they yeah where they put all their cards on the table and say this is actually who I am and this is actually who I am and this is what I want and I, and these are all the ugly parts of me like you know all yep. of the you know the nice parts yep. of me but this is what's actually going on inside my head that I haven't shared with you and now that um, you, and now that, is very scary and now that you know that do you still love me or do you still have what it takes exactly. to love me exactly yeah Exactly, exactly. I love. I yeah. loved. I loved the scene when I, I think it was the scene when, when, when she breaks up essentially with David and and walks out the door. And I would imagine this is pretty intentional. But the 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 architectural tools sitting up against the wall. I just I just thought that was delightful. 
Oh, that's interesting. I don't to know me, if that was intentional. Well, I mean, to that was me, absolutely intentional. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's, it's whether it was or it wasn't is irrelevant. It was, it's, it, it's part of authorial intention. It seems to me because it's just to me. I just went, oh yeah, perfect. This is redesign. We got to go back to the drawing table. This is just, it was, oh. yeah, it was really lovely, really lovely. Adam, so what's going on with the Lego? What's up with the Lego? Is that something that was you were passionate about as a kid maybe uh i mean i think i think lots of lots of kids play with lego i mean i i have i have dated men who were very into lego uh, <laughs> and i <laughs> easy easy and, i'm into lego i'm a big fan of lego <laughs> uh yeah i mean i and i i uh have a friend whose partner uh, wrote a book about Lego. Oh, you're uh, kidding! Uh, an, an adult man. Awesome. So <laughs> it, just, it just seemed like, as somebody who is, you know, he's he's a, a planner, but he's yep. also, in a certain way, like regressing to a bit of a like, yep. a, a childhood kind of phase because he has all this time on his hands. It, it felt like something that that seemed very natural for him to yeah. be um, kind of fiddling with at home. Um, I think it's very funny uh, that he, you know, he's he's this. this um, urban planner and, and has you know certain ideas about design, but he's just terrible. <laughs> yeah. like it's supposed to be just you know, like building this, this um, that's uh, hilarious uh, 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 structure that is supposed to be a model of uh, Ravel City Hall in, in Toronto, and it just like it just never comes together. <laughs> it really doesn't yeah. come together. It's exactly. so true. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was really it was, I think it was, it was all of those things. It was a bit of a callback to to, to childhood, right? And um, just something that felt really natural for his uh, professional life as well. Well, and it's and it and it is kind of the stuff of everyday life, right? I mean, this is what mm-hmm. relationships are made up of. You come home from work, and your partner is, I don't know, reading a book or you know, cutting their toenails or whatever. Very mundane, very average and everyday. But this is what mo- like that's kind of that middling, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when you're really comfortable around yeah. each other, you're not, yeah, self-conscious of like, oh, my partner's going to see me do this or that. And you're just sort of like, okay, here I am. Especially when I think if, if you are unemployed and you're spending the whole day at home, you're not going to get changed into a suit. <laughs> That's <know>? right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you're in your sweatpants and T-shirt and it's the idea of like, oh, I have to impress my partner um, kind of, you know, goes out the window a little bit and uh, uh, that can make things difficult. Yeah, this is the best you're going to get from me today. Yeah. I yeah. mean, when, when I work from home, I will often be in my pajamas all day long and then I will like shower and change before my partner comes home. Because oh, really? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's like very thoughtful. Bum. <laughs> well, yeah, it just, it, yeah, it makes me not feel like a total bum. Yeah, it's yeah you have more someone... Yeah, I'm, I live by myself. Um, should I, I don't know if I should admit that I'm in my pajamas right now. <laughs> nice. Well, that's, that's the beauty. I, it's, I regret that I'm not in my pajamas right now. Yeah, I'm not. Often I am, but I'm not today, so I can't. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're not going to be able to commiserate on this one. So i got to ask you, we're gonna sadly going to have to wrap it up. I'm having a whole, whole lot of fun here with so many questions we still haven't asked. I love that you guys have put this this film out there, this story out there that that, that – I frankly think every couple should see. And oh, thank I mean, you. Yeah, I mean, it just it raises so many questions and does it in 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 such a uh, such a delightful and and, and and touching and meaningful way. Um, you can't, says Tom. You can't gift your way out of this. And mm-hmm. I just I love that line. And I kind of I kind of I'm not sure I agree with Tom because it seems to me by the end of the film, which is or at least by the end of this part of the story because obviously this is going to continue on or at least so we assume it seems like yeah. maybe maybe he maybe you can gift your way out of things maybe that's what grace and generosity and and kindness and love really again is all about saying i'm oh, sorry yeah, yeah, I think, I think, yeah i think yeah i think i think i can agree with that i mean it's a different interpretation of of, of what a gift is yeah certainly way too whole is that way too hopeful for you adam is that way too sort of positive <laughs> No, I mean, I, I I just moved into a new condo with with my husband and got married, and I have a dog and a kid. Like, I am feeling very hopeful. <laughs> nice, <laughs> but also, you know, knowing that life is mostly misery and death, and everything ends. So, 
I can, <laughs> I can hold both those things at the same time. Yeah, well, I think, well, isn't, yeah, and that's that's the uncertainty of, of not only their relationship in, in this film, but I don't know, it's just such a beautiful metaphor for pretty much everything, it seems to me. Yeah, I, I think, well, um, we, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we intended it in more in that scene as him referring to the, um, the material gift. Yes, that, yes. That Lauren was bringing. But, well, b- bottle, um, of, bottle of scotch, wasn't it, I think? Y- yeah, bottle and, and scotch, macaron. Macaron. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's a couple of other times in, in the film that, that maybe didn't end up making it where she did kind of appease other, or try to appease yes. people with, with gifts or, or gestures that were um, some way, in some way shallow. You know, the right. gesture yeah. was in order to avoid really uh, addressing what was happening. In exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yes, I would agree that you can. Um, uh, sorry, what was the? Qu- I forget your exact. Well, no, just this whole <laughs> idea of you can't you can't gift your way out of something like this. But isn't I mean, isn't that kind of in a sense what love is? I mean, you know, there's there's forgiveness. You know, we offend, we it, step outside of the boundaries, and we've got to come back exactly, in. You yeah, know what I mean? I, I, yeah, I think yeah, approaching your your partner with compassion. Compassion, is, beautiful. Yeah is the most important thing, yeah. And wouldn't the world be a little bit of a better place if we had a little bit more of that? I mean, I, I, uh, and listen, I'm not usually this uber positive, by the way. This is not, (laughs) this is not my strong suit, as my wife Elizabeth would tell you. I'm gifted in the art of melancholy. It's, it, you know, it, it comes, it, it comes easily to me. I so wanted to ask you, and I don't know if I can do this on, are we wired for monogamy? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, well, this gives me a, a little chance to uh, mention my new favorite person. Oh, um, good. Adam <laughs> heard me talk about her a lot. Um, there's this celebrity therapist named Esther Perel. Okay. Have you heard of her? I have not. Um, she uh, just came out with a new book called, oh no, am I going to forget the name? Um called oh no what is it called um i was just reading about it state of affairs today but the state of affairs yes yes she just came out with a new book on tuesday called the state of affairs rethinking infidelity oh interesting. and uh and i would recommend everyone check out i have not read the book yet but she has a, a blog where she um, and she has a, a podcast where you can listen in on her some of her sessions um, with her patients going through um, a fair, like when one of the people has had affairs, and it's so interesting to hear her um, her take on affairs and how they can um, make or break a relationship, and uh, when when happy people have affairs, like that's. Right. So fascinating. To oh, me. And I think yeah. th- that's sort of a, a roundabout, a very long way of uh, getting to your question of are we wired for monogamy? Um, she talks a lot about how women um, in particular are actually the ones who grow tired of monogamy sooner than men. Oh, interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of, that's a really long conversation, but are we wired? I mean, I think. Yeah, in certain ways, yes, but to put all of that pressure on someone, um, like this is what she talks about a lot, to to ask our partner to give us everything in life um, is is totally unrealistic. Right. Um, And so she talks about um, a lot of strong relationships having, like those individuals have strong social networks. Sure. Outside yeah. of their relationship, where they can get, um, you know, uh, uh, their different needs and desires met outside that relationship. But yeah, in terms of just sex, like the, yeah, I think that's where things get really complicated. Well, none of yeah, and none of these. I I, I didn't ask the question thinking, oh gee, I'm going to get a yes or no answer. I mean, they're pretty difficult yeah. questions <laughs> to answer. Pretty yeah. complicated. <laughs> I mean, we really are a bit of a mess, aren't we, us human beings? I mean, it's quite fascinating. But I, but I, yeah. I did want to ask you, though, too, um, and, and again, maybe we'll have to do this in part two, but, and, and it's really interesting that you bring up this book because, um, you know, happy people, you know, whatever that means, contented people having affairs, what does that mean? And mm-hmm. what are sort of the implications and what were the assumptions made? But I wanted to say, so would Lauren, 
would Lauren have been capable of, or would she have had this sort of uh, the the uh, you know uh, affair with David if things had been different with Tom, if the Lego had been put aside, if he had have been working out more often? You know what I mean? Would it have still been possible? I mean, really difficult question to answer, obviously, but still pretty interesting to consider. I mean, I don't, I don't think she necessarily would i mean i, th- I think that mm-hmm. if if they were actually communicating really well right yes um and and you know and they were talking about all the things that, that they need not just sex but also sex yes but um, also sex yeah, yeah. the sex that they were having might be different and it might be better and she not want or, or need that from him but also if yeah. they're communicating a lot better uh you know and and tried some different things and they didn't work out she might be like yeah i guess i'm not like I'm not gonna be able to give you that kind of like, you know, like dirtier alpha sex that you're looking for. So, you know, if once a month you want to go out and find some guy that's gonna, you know, be a little a little rougher than you uh, for for some sex, and you're gonna like come home and have an interesting, wonderful, rewarding relationship. I think that that's something that they could have negotiated. It's just that both of them made. Uh, both of them were unable to communicate their things. Um, yeah, and that's yeah. I'm not sure if Tom would be agreeable. To that yeah, that, yeah. That's not either. the that's not the time that <laughs> Tom that I got to know in the film. But yeah, but but yeah, but I mean, it, would, it would definitely be a, a journey for for them to try to right, arrive right. at that place. But if but ultimately, I mean, they're 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 gonna they're not gonna get anywhere if they never. Have yeah, which is which, which I think is really wonderful too. How you, uh, I'm so glad you didn't wrap it all up at the end. I mean, this just this, mm-hmm. there's this openness. This, they're, they're looking at each other. There's 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 room here. We 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 have we have decisions to make. We've we've got responsibilities and choices, and we have conversations. And it's it's we're back to kind of your comment there, Adam, about just con- conversation, communication, and actually mm-hmm. getting you know back back full circle. Trouble below the surface. Let's actually talk about that stuff before it maybe bubbles to the surface or, or something. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Thanks so much to to both of you for joining me today. Just had had su- such a wonderful time. The film is great. Great, great. Adam Garner Jones and Sarah Koloski here today to talk about the film and relationships and love and pretty much everything that matters. Um, guys, thanks, <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for joining me today. Real pleasure. Thanks. Thank you so Thank much. You. This was really fun.